So in this video, we're going to look at a topic that terrifies flat earthers. Every time I have offered to debate a flat earther on this subject, they make excuses and run. I'm talking about aircraft flight planning. As we have seen on this channel in the past, real aircraft flight plans irrefutably prove that the Earth is a globe. The spherical nature of the Earth and the radius itself are right there in the flight planning equations. And those formulas produce the results that match the real Earth. So before getting into this video, I just want to share some footage from recent trips. I'm having a lot of fun flying the new aircraft around Australia, and we have a trip to the USA planned in December. I'll talk a little more about that later. But right now I just want to show you the advanced avionics in this machine. Here we can see the weather radar overlaid on the map. But we have a 3D capability with this radar so that we can actually see the profile view. By using a scroll wheel, we can point the radar towards any desired target, in this case a thunderstorm. And when we do that, we have a clear indication of its vertical profile. There we can see that the aircraft is above the top of the thunderstorm. This particular one is not on our track, but if it was, we would be flying over it comfortably before commencing descent. And this clip was a few minutes later, where we can see another thunderstorm fairly close to the planned track. If we look outside the window, we can actually see the top of that cell building up here. This TOD in green indicates top of descent. So at that point, we would commence our descent, which means we are going to pass fairly close to this thunderstorm. Thunderstorms can have hail and more significantly, turbulence. So for the sake of comfort for the passengers and the safety of the aircraft, we try to give thunderstorms a wide berth where possible. In this scenario, we had requested deviations up to 15 miles right of track. And that corridor between the solid magenta and the dashed magenta line indicates the area that we were permitted to manoeuvre. It was actually quite easy to divert right of track around that thunderstorm and then resume the star. And star means standard arrival route into Sydney. I took this photo the other day on descent into Adelaide as we were passing 19,000 feet. The synthetic vision system is turned on, indicated by this SVS in the head-up display window. And that puts a dome over the airports in the region. This is Adelaide Airport, and the one to the right here is Edinburgh, the military air force base. What we can see is the HUD horizon line, which indicates true level, horizontal from the pilot's eyes, is clearly above the Earth horizon. The nose attitude of the aircraft is pitched down. This line here indicates the pitch down attitude. The velocity vector indicates the actual flight path of the aircraft. So the difference between the velocity vector and the actual pitch attitude of the aircraft is what gives the wing a slight positive angle of attack, even though the nose is pointed below true horizontal. Now some flat earthers still seem to have a notoriously poor understanding of how this HUD horizon line works. It is very simple. The HUD horizon line is always showing true horizontal from the pilot's eyes. To help make this point clear, here is another Global 7500 being viewed through the HUD. And we can see the HUD horizon line is passing directly through the middle of the window just as it is on our aircraft. This line is true horizontal always regardless of the pitch attitude of the aircraft. And here is another clip down at Canberra Airport. You can see the HUD horizon line is in line with the base of this window. Due to perspective, the top part of the building is angled downwards and the bottom part near the ground appears to be angled upwards. But the part that is at true horizontal at eye level is completely flat. And that is the position at which we see the head-up display horizon line. There is a close-up. 
this HUD horizon line always shows true horizontal. So back to the topic of this video. These are the key points. Every airliner uses flight plans based on a globe. The radius of the Earth is in the flight planning equations. Flat Earthers still can't flight plan. No flat Earther can provide an alternative to the globe for flight planning. And flat Earthers always run when I offer to debate them on flight planning. This is Flight Radar 24 and there are presently thousands of aircraft in the sky. Each one of these aircraft is using a flight plan calculated for a globe. The flight management system is based on the globe and the flight charts, whether they are electronic or paper, are all based on the globe. Flat earthers simply have nowhere to go. This fact is irrefutable. If you analyse the flight planning equations, you can see that they are based on the spherical nature of the earth and they contain the radius of the earth. So here are some old aviation paper charts. We don't use them anymore as we are now completely paperless in the cockpit. But each aviation chart will state the type of projection used to produce it. The Lambert's conformal projection is a globe projection. This chart shows Hawaii and the mainland USA and down towards the southwest, we go down towards Australia. The charts have tracks and distances between numerous waypoints. Each waypoint has a latitude and a longitude. The distance and the track for each of those legs is computed for a globe. I have shown that in detail in previous videos. So here is one of my flight planning Excel spreadsheets. And this is one I've used for many years. In the early days of GPS in the 1990s, I was using this to produce waypoints that result in a great circle route. In this spreadsheet, you put in the departure point and the destination, and you then put in how often you would like it to produce a waypoint. In this case, every 200 nautical miles. This is the radius of the Earth right here. 3,440 nautical miles. What this spreadsheet does is use the Haversine formula to determine the angle between the two points and then it multiplies that angle by the radius of the Earth. In this point here we can see it is multiplying C8 which is the angle in radians by E8 which is the Earth's radius and that results in a distance on the surface of the Earth. So if we look deeper into the spreadsheet, we can see the radius of the Earth, cell E8, is used many times. When we specify the leg distance, it needs to calculate what percentage of the Earth's radius that 200 miles is, and it does so in this formula. In each line where we have the distance remaining the value of the Earth's radius is used once again. In flight planning, the radius of the Earth never changes. Refraction, weather conditions or observer altitude are all irrelevant. The radius of the Earth remains constant. So this spreadsheet assumes the Earth is a perfect sphere with a fixed radius. Now in reality, that is not the case. The Earth is slightly wider around the equator than it is around the poles. But the difference is only 0.3%. For flight planning purposes, that is negligible, and a flight plan produced for a perfect sphere is more than acceptable for use in a real aircraft. Here is one of the early videos on my channel comparing a perfect circle to one flattened by 0.3%. Visually, they look the same. Mathematically, it means on a four hour flight, the difference is less than one minute. Let's look at Sydney to Perth as an example. So this is a different spreadsheet and this one uses the calculations for a perfect sphere, but also for the oblate spheroid. It uses the 0.3% flattening in the calculation. And we can see that here. 
the flattening ratio is 1 over 298. The radius of the Earth is in this cell, E9, in this case 6371. In the perfect sphere calculation, you can see the radius is applied here, and in the spheroid calculation, it is applied in this cell, and we add 7 to give us the increased radius at the equator. For Sydney to Perth, the known distance is 3284 kilometres. Calculated on a perfect sphere, that is a distance of 1770 nautical miles. On the spheroid, it's 1773 nautical miles, a difference of just 0.21%. Our aircraft is flying about 8 nautical miles every minute. So 3 nautical miles is less than 30 seconds of flight time. On a trip from Sydney to Perth, less than 30 seconds is negligible. In fact, time intervals are rounded up or down to the nearest minute. And because there are multiple waypoints en route, the actual value calculated between each waypoint will be identical for the sphere and for the spheroid when you map it out in a flight plan. ATC only require us to update our ETA if it changes by more than two minutes. So on a Sydney to Perth flight, the difference in the flight plan being less than 30 seconds is insignificant. Now the clincher here is that using spherical trigonometry with a radius of 6371 kilometers, we can produce real flight plans. Thousands of aircraft can use these flight plans to navigate accurately around the Earth. The math works. How do we know 6371 is the correct radius of the Earth? Because the distances produced by this equation match reality on the Earth. What happens if we put in a different radius? If we put in 8,000 kilometers radius, the numbers produced by the formulas are incorrect. It actually tells us that this radius is 20% too big. If we put in a radius of 4,000 kilometers, the distances calculated are too small. In this case, 59% too small. So even if we didn't know what the radius of the Earth was, we could use a spreadsheet like this to narrow it down. We would simply have to keep increasing the value until the results matched known distances across the Earth. And it doesn't have to be Sydney to Perth. You could repeat this using a football field, getting the accurate latitude and longitude at each end and the known distance, and then comparing the calculated distance using various radiuses of the Earth. The one that works is 6371. It's a bit like Goldilocks and the Three Bears. 8,000 kilometers radius is too big. 4,000 kilometers radius is too small, but a radius of 6371 is just right. So here is the problem for flat earthers. The math works. It works accurately all over the earth. It works so well that millions of passengers trust their lives to the flight plans produced by these equations. If you're a flat earther, to debunk flight planning, you must either provide proof that the math does not work all over the Earth, good luck with that, you will fail, or provide a single formula not based on a globe and not using a radius that can achieve the same thing. I have been asking flat earthers for this for five years. All I get are excuses, insults or crickets. They have no alternative to the globe for flight planning. So we're now approaching the end of 2021 and flat earthers still can't flight plan. Some of you guys have been doing this for more than five years. There are teenage kids that can flight plan. It only takes a few months at pilot school to learn how to flight plan to air transport pilot level and yet no flat earther can produce a flight plan even to the private pilot level. I've been doing this for five years. Five years ago, there were 15-year-old kids who are now 20-year-old fighter pilots. What have flat earthers achieved in the same amount of time? They still can't flight plan. 
So here is one of the early videos on my channel. Almost five years ago, I posted a friendly challenge to all flat earth believers. And this was to produce a flight plan based on a flat earth. More than 100,000 views later, and more than 2,000 comments later, not one flat earther has been able to achieve it. Again, all I have received from them are excuses and insults. Now, I don't accept the excuse that you're not a pilot because in later videos on my channel, I posted a flight planning challenge and there were numerous entries by people such as Ruhif and Where's Wally and many others who are not pilots who have had no formal pilot training and yet they were able to produce extremely accurate flight plans. In fact, just as good as I would expect from my fellow pilots in the real world. So if you're a flat earther, I'm not interested in hearing any more excuses. I have heard them all. Excuses don't produce flight plans, and pilots need flight plans to navigate aircraft accurately around the real earth. I believe that no flat earther can provide an alternative to the globe for flight planning. So either prove me wrong or admit you have nothing. And if you have nothing, we're just going to stick to the globe because it works. And the final point, flat earthers always run when I offer to debate them on flight planning. To be honest, I've had a lot of fun in recent months asking countless flat earthers to debate me live on flight planning. They all run. They make excuses or they simply disappear. It's a nice feeling knowing that the wolf pack has total air superiority over the entire flat earth community. So there are some flat earthers who love talking about flight paths, but their claims are so amateurish. Like David here, it is apparent to me every time he talks about airline routes that he has no understanding of cabotage laws or many of the operational factors that a pilot has to consider when producing a flight plan. I have offered to school, I mean debate David, on flight plans many times, but he always runs. David. If you ever work up the courage to face a real pilot on the topic of flight plans, you know where I am. But just remember, you're going to need a flight plan for that. There's no point turning up to a gunfight with an empty holster. And remember, David, you need to have more than just a few lines on a map. That's not a flight plan. That's a flight plan. A real flight plan has numerous columns of actual numbers, waypoints, distances, tracks, wind components, time intervals, and fuel values and burns for each sector. If you can't produce a flight plan like this, you're going to be demolished in the debate. And that's probably why you run. I get it. So I predict once again, flat earthers will have nothing more than excuses and insults. If you want to come to my channel and post excuses and post insults, please go right ahead because it proves my point nicely. I will be asking you for a real flight plan and the formula to prove that it is not based on a globe and does not use the radius of the earth. If you don't have it, you're going to look very silly. No flat earther can provide an alternative to the globe for flight planning. And that's the bottom line. Pilots use the globe for flight planning. Emma, do you want to show Daddy how you find south with the stars? Mm -hmm. Okay, what's first? Daddy, this is the Southern Cross. The Southern Cross. Mm -hmm. And what do we do after that? We go four and a half times. And then four and a half times. The long diagonal. The long diagonal and then drop to south. Drop to south. Mm -hmm. Perfect.